My First Bible presents The Story of Joshua After the death of Moses, the Israelites mourned him for thirty days. Joshua, hey. son of Nun, who was Moses' assistant, mm -hmm. was named the new leader of Israel. Yeah. God told him, huh? My, My servant, servant Moses, Moses has died. died. That's, That's why, why you and all the people must prepare to cross the Jordan River and enter the land that I will give to the Israelites. Just as I promised Moses, I will give you all, every place your feet touch. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great Euphrates River, Hittite territory, to the Mediterranean Sea, which is to the west. During all the days of your life, no one will be able to confront you. Just as I was with Moses, I will also be with you. I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. Be strong and brave, because you will make this community inherit the land that I promised to their ancestors. I only ask for you to be courageous and firm, to obey all the laws my servant Moses commanded. Don't stray from it at all. Only then will you succeed wherever you go. Comply with care, all that is written in the Book of the Law. Then you will prosper, and you will succeed. See that I command you that strive and be brave. Do not fear or dismay, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Hey. So, Joshua ordered the leaders of the community, let them go all over the camp to tell the community to prepare provisions, because in a few days, they will cross the Jordan River to take possession of the territory that God will give you as an inheritance. To the tribe of Reuben, tribe of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua told them to remember the words of Moses, and he commanded them to obey the laws that God commanded. They answered him, we will obey everything you have told us, and we will go wherever you send us. We will obey you in everything, just like we did with Moses. All we ask is that the Lord be with you as he was with Moses. They were in the territory of Shittim, east of the Jordan River, facing the land of Jericho. Jericho was very close to Canaan. Joshua secretly sent two spies with the following command. I want you to go as spies to explore the land which is on the other side of the river. You will go huh? to the city of Jericho. Find out how many soldiers there are, what type of weapons they use, and how strong they are. Then come back and tell me everything you saw. The two men nodded yeah. their heads. Mm -hmm. Later, the spies managed to enter Jericho. The city was surrounded by high and wide walls. They noted that they were well protected and that the guards patrolled over it. Being there, the two men walked past a group of soldiers. The soldiers wondered, Hmm, who are those two strangers? They look like Israelites! Huh? Stop, spies! Ah. The two spies ran through ah. the narrow ah. streets, yeah. looking for where to hide. Ah. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Psst, this ah. way, someone whispered ah. to them. The spies ah. saw a woman pointing to a door, ah. and they hid in the woman's house. This woman works in places of very bad reputation. She was a harlot. Her name was Rahab. Mm -hmm. The la, spies la, la, la. remained hiding in her house. When the king of Jericho found oh. out that two Israelite spies had blah, 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 infiltrated blah, blah, his blah, blah, land, he blah, 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 ordered the soldiers blah, blah, blah. to search wait, the wait, whole wait, city. Wait, wait, wait. Soon wait, wait, they wait, came wait, to wait, Rahab's wait, house wait, wait, where they were hiding. There, they knocked on the door. 
when Rahab realized that they were the soldiers, she quickly took the spies to the roof of her house and hid them among the bundles of flax that she had there. The soldiers told Rahab, We already know that you have the spies here. Don't you see that they come to spy on our city and they come from Israel? What? Mm-hmm. No! Mm-hmm. They were spies? Yes. Israelites? Yes. Ah, I didn't know who they were nor where they came from. Uh -huh. They left when it began to get dark at closing time of the city gates, and I don't know where they went. Oh. Go after them. Maybe you will reach them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The soldiers went after the spies by the path of the Jordan River. When the soldiers left, Rahab went up to the roof and told the spies, I know that God is on your side and that he will give you this land. All the inhabitants of this city, they are scared to death of you. Everyone here knows how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea so that you could pass after leaving Egypt. We have also heard how you completely destroyed the Amorites, Sichon, and Og. That is why we have a great fear of you. <laughs> I know that the Lord is God of gods both in heaven and on earth. So, I beg you to swear right now in the name of Jehovah that you will be kind with me and my family, just as I have been with you. I want you to guarantee a sign that you will spare the lives of my parents, of my siblings, and everyone who lives with them. Please, swear that you will save us from death. We swear on our lives that the lot of you will not be in danger, they Yay. answered. If you don't turn us in, we will be kind to you mm -hmm. and we will keep our promise when the Lord gives us this place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Rahab lowered through the window a red rope for the spies to escape. Well, the house where she lived was on the city wall. Rahab told them, Flee towards the mountains so that your pursuers won't find you. Hide there for three days until they return. After we're gone, tie this same rope to the window. When we take this city, we will know which house this is. We will save you, and your family members will stay at home. But the rope must be put in the window. She nodded her head. Yeah. The men mm. tied the rope, and so they left the house. Upon going down, Rahab said goodbye and tied the red rope to the window. In the meantime, they headed for the mountains, and they remained hidden for three days. The men came back very happily to where Joshua was, and they told him everything that had happened to them. The place is ours! God will hand it to us because... Everyone in Jericho is afraid of us! <laughs> With this news, the people of Israel gathered courage, strength, and bravery to enter as soon as possible to the city of Jericho. Very early in the morning, the Israelites set out from Shittim and camped on the bank of the Jordan River which was the only thing that divided the Israelites to the promised city, Canaan. After three days, the leaders of the town toured the whole camp with the following command. When they see the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, leave your posts and set out after them, so they know where to go. Nevertheless, you must keep about a kilometer of distance between you and the Ark. Don't go near it. Okay. okay. After, God told Joshua, This is the day that I will begin to aggrandize you before the people of Israel, so they will know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Give the following order to the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant. God gave Joshua instructions, and he ordered the people, Purify yourselves, because tomorrow the Lord is going to do great wonders among you. 
And to the priests he said, Load the Ark of the Covenant and stand in front of the people. The priests obeyed, and they took charge of the people. And then added, Now they will know that the living God is among you, and that he will surely drive out the Canaanites. The Ark of the Covenant that belongs to the ruler of all the earth will cross the Jordan ahead of you. As soon as the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant set foot in the Jordan, the waters will stop running, and they will stop oh? by forming a huge wall. Ah. Some Israelites did not believe blah, these blah, words, blah, blah, blah. for it was impossible blah, 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 blah. to cross the Jordan on foot because the waters overflowed. The next day, Joshua commanded the priests who carried the ark to enter the Jordan River. As soon as the feet of the priests touched the waters, these stopped flowing, and the waters formed an immense wall. A dry road formed in front of the priests, just as it happened in the Red Sea. Not yet. They walked to the middle of the river. Not a drop of water touched them. They were completely dry. Then Joshua told the people to follow them. One by one, the families, camels, donkeys, and the cattle crossed the Jordan River that day. As they walked, they passed by the priests who carried the ark. The people of Israel took all day. When they finished crossing the river, God told Joshua to choose one man from blah, each blah, one blah, of the blah, twelve blah, tribes blah, blah, blah. of Israel, blah, 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 blah. and to order them each to take a stone, to take it exactly from the place where the priests stood. Blah, 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 blah. So they did. While each man took a stone, Joshua placed twelve stones in the middle of the Jordan River, where the priests stopped. Those stones are still there to this day. Everything was done just as God had commanded. Then God told Joshua to order the priests to come out of the Jordan. So they did. As soon as their feet touched solid ground, the waters of the wow. river returned wow. to their place, wow. and they <laughs> overflowed as usual. <laughs> Not yet. Oh. <sighs> the twelve stones that the men took, they placed them as a memorial monument. And Joshua said to the Israelites, In the future, when your children ask you, Why are these stones here? You will respond by saying that Israel crossed the Jordan River dry, in the same way that the Lord did with the Red Sea. This is for all nations on earth. Recognize and know that the Lord is mighty, and for you to learn to fear him forever. And indeed, when the Amorite kings and the Canaanites they found out that the Lord had dried up the Jordan River for the Israelites to cross over, they panicked, and they didn't dare face them. Later, while they camped on the plain of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated Passover. After that, the people began to feed on the products of the land, of unleavened bread and toasted wheat. Since then, blah, 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 manna blah. stopped dropping, and during all that year, the um, town ate um, what it produced. Um, um, um. One day, Joshua was near Jericho. There you could see the great walls, and noticed that the doors were well secured for fear of the Israelites. No one could enter hey. or leave. Get out of here! Oh. Oh. 
Joshua looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a sword in hand. Joshua approached him and asked, Who are you? Are you one of us or one of our enemies? Neither of the two answered. I present myself to you as commander of the Lord's army. Joshua immediately fell face down on the ground and asked, What orders do you bring, my lord, for this servant of yours? The commander of the army of the Lord answered, Take the sandals off your feet, because the place you step on is holy. Joshua obeyed, and God said to Joshua, Joshua, you must know that I have already delivered Jericho into your hands and its king with his warriors. But you must follow my instructions to take possession of the city. If you obey me, the walls of Jericho will fall to the ground before your eyes. Now, listen carefully to what you should do. Okay. God gave all the instructions to Joshua to prepare for battle. Blah, blah. Already blah, having blah, blah, all blah, the indications, blah, blah. Joshua prepared the people. The town should blah, have blah, a parade blah, blah, blah. around the walls blah, blah, of the blah, blah, city blah, blah. of Jericho blah, blah. for seven blah, days. Blah, 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 blah. First, he told seven priests, let them take care to blow the shofar. Blah, blah. It's like a trumpet. <gasps> Other priests, they were charged with carrying the Ark of the Covenant. The soldiers, they should march in the front and behind them, while the people would march in back. Blah, 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 blah. Ah, blah, oh. blah, blah. Hey. <laughs> Joshua also explained to them that during the first six days, they would only have to give one tour of the city a day, that everyone should remain silent, and the only sound would be that of the trumpets. The walls of Jericho were full of soldiers with the best weapons ready for battle. Everyone was watching what the Israelites were doing. But seeing that they were just hanging around, they asked themselves, What are they doing? What does this mean? How strange are those people? A parade is not a battle. Mm -hmm. And so, the people of Israel marched in silence. Only the sound of trumpets was heard. They went around Jericho, and they returned to their camp. <coughs> On day number two, they paraded again in the exact same way, silently, only with the sound of trumpets. So again, the king and the soldiers, they leaned out, wondering what were they going to do? But again, they kept turning around and going back to their camp. And so, they did the same on day three, four, five, and six. Hi. As the days went by, those of Jericho, some stopped taking importance and left until the seventh day came. Very early in the morning, they got up and marched around the city, just as they had done the previous days, only that on that day, they repeated the march seven times. On the seventh and final lap, Joshua said to all of them, it's time to scream. God has given us the city of Jericho. The only thing to remember is that they should not take anything from Jericho, so that you nor the camp of Israel is placed in danger of disgrace. The only ones that will be saved will be Rahab and those who are in her house, because she saved the lives of our spies. Mm -hmm. Outside of this, nothing from this city will be saved. All the gold, silver, bronze, and iron, they belong to the house of the Lord. Now you know, now start screaming. Shout as loud as you can! Everyone started screaming and making a lot of noise. And suddenly, 
The earth began to shake, each time stronger. Suddenly, an earthquake shook the walls of Jericho, and it collapsed to the floor. Oh, oh my god. Hey! hey. Attack! <laughs> the Israelites advanced without giving an inch, and they took the wait, city. Wait, 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 wait. At the edge of the sword, they killed the people and animals that were there. They destroyed everything. The young spies went directly to the harlot Rahab, and they rescued her along with her family and belongings, and took them to a safe place. God had warned them to not take anything for themselves from Jericho, lest he bring misfortune to the Israelites. But there was a man who did not obey those words. Finally, the city was totally destroyed. Jericho belonged to the country of Canaan. God destroyed this city because the culture of the Canaanites had become extremely morally corrupt and they practiced the sacrificing of children in honor of their gods. And God did not want these practices to influence Israel. Therefore, the Canaanites had to be destroyed. At that moment, Joshua swore an oath that whoever dares to rebuild this city shall be cursed in the presence of the Lord. And so, God kept his promises little by little, only if they obeyed and showed that they were open. Those who turned to him, just as he did with Rahab. Before conquering Jericho, God had warned them not to take anything from there for themselves. But there was one Israelite who disobeyed that command. His name was Achan. Achan kept to himself part of the spoil that God had commanded to destroy. Shh. This man of the tribe of Judah provoked the Lord to anger against the Israelites. Joshua sent some men to explore the land of Ai, for this would be the next city to conquer. Ai was opposite Bethel, and very close to Jericho. Joshua said to the men, Go and explore the land, and bring me a report of how many soldiers there are. The men went from Jericho to Ai. Shortly after, they returned and gave the following report to Joshua. <laughs> we saw Ai. It'll be very easy to conquer that land. It is not necessary for all the people to go to battle. That population has very few men, and there is no need to tire the people to go there. Send two or three thousand soldiers. A few men will be more than enough for us to take that city. And so, for that reason, Joshua sent 3,000 soldiers to conquer Ai. When the Israelite army was approaching the city, they were confident that they could win this battle because they said that God was with them. But suddenly, the army of Ai appeared and attacked them. There they died, 36 Israelites. They cried out, Oh no, what's going on? They're beating us! Retreat! When they retreated, they were chased from the city gate to the quarries. The soldiers returned, sad, because they were defeated. When the people realized this, they became discouraged and were filled with fear. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
In the face of this, Joshua and the leaders of Israel, upon learning of it, rent their garments and fell on their faces to the ground before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. They cast dust upon their heads, showing how saddened and dismayed they were by what had happened. And Joshua exclaimed to God, Why, Lord? Why did you make this people to cross over the Jordan and then deliver it into the hands of the Canaanites? We would have been better off staying on the other side of the river. God, please answer me. What can I say now that Israel has fled from its enemies? When they find out about all this, all the Canaanites will turn against us and they will exterminate us. What will become of your great name, Lord? What will become of my God? Joshua, God answered him. What are you doing lying there prostrate? Get up! The Israelites have sinned and have broken my covenant which I commanded them. You must know that there is anathema among the people. Anathema means curse. Ah. They went against what I commanded, and they have appropriated objects that were to be destroyed from Jericho, and they have hidden it among their possessions. So, the Israelites will not be able to stand up to their enemies, but will have to flee from their adversaries. If you do not destroy the anathema which is in the midst of you, I will not stand by your side. So, get up, Joshua! Purify the people! Tell them to sanctify themselves to appear before me tomorrow, to appear yeah. by tribes, and I will point out who is to blame. Mm -hmm. blah, 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 Joshua blah, gathered blah, the people blah, blah, blah. together and said to them, People of Israel, purify yourselves! There is a sinner among us! Someone disobeyed God's command and stole condemned and unclean, impure objects from Jericho. Because of that theft, we were defeated. But God will reveal to us all who the traitor is. Tomorrow, we will know the truth. At this time, Achan could confess his sin, but he decided to remain silent. Mm, nah, there are too many of us. They'll never be able to figure out that I took that booty. The following day, very early in the morning, Joshua sent for, one by one, the mm. tribes of Israel. No. No. The tribe that was singled out huh? was Judah. Blah, 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 blah. All huh? the clans of Judah came near. Then the clan of Zerah blah, 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 blah. was singled out. <laughs> Ah. Oh. Aiken was realizing that more uh. and more, Joshua was getting closer to figuring it out, but he still didn't say anything. Then, of the Zerah clan, blah, 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 asked blah, blah. to approach the Zabdi's family, who were uh. just the family of Aiken. Blah, blah, Joshua, blah, blah. he passed over every one of Zabdi's family, and Joshua said to them, some one of you is responsible for the misfortune of Israel, and that one will pay for what he has done. The man who broke the covenant with the Lord, it's Achan! Achan? 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 It's you! Uh, me? My son, honor the Lord, the God of Israel, and confess what you have done. Don't hide anything. Achan answered him, Yes, it's true. It is true that I have sinned against the Lord. I saw in the spoil a beautiful oh, robe ah. of Babylon, 200 <laughs> silver coins, and a gold bar of half a kilo. I coveted it and took it. Then I hid it underground in the middle of my tent. The money is also there, underneath everything. <laughs> Quickly, blah, 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 Joshua blah, 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 sent blah, blah. out some men mm -hmm. who ran to Achan's tent. There they found all that Achan had hidden. They picked it up 
and brought it to Joshua and the Israelites. Why have you brought such evil upon the Israelites? Now you and yours will have to die for this. Achan, with his family and everything they had, were taken to the Valley of Acre. There, the Israelites blah, 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 blah. stoned Achan and his family. And burned everything. Oh my god! Then they placed upon them a large pile of stones. So that place is known as the Valley of Acre. And so the Lord returned to be with the Israelites. Achan thought no one would see him, but disobedience to God brings bad consequences. After Achan's death, God went back to the Israelites and told Joshua, Joshua, do not be afraid, be brave. Lead the whole team and attack the city of Hai. I will make you victorious on his king and army. You will take their city and all its surrounding territory. In this case, you can keep the spoils of war and all the livestock. Make an ambush in the superior side of the city. Joshua, together with his army, made a plan to fight Ai. He chose 30,000 soldiers and sent them during the night with the order to get behind the city between Bethel and Ai and to make an ambush. Meanwhile, Joshua and his troop led the way. The plan was that when the enemies attacked Joshua and their troop, they will run like the first time. The enemies will chase them, thinking they are running again, so they will drive them away from the city. Meanwhile, the other Israelites will leave their hiding place and take Ai from behind. Very early in the morning, Joshua got going with his troops toward Hai. Those of Ai ah. realized that the Israelites oh. were close and all the soldiers moved to fight against the Israelites. Just as planned, the Israelites pretended to be defeated. Oh no, they're attacking us. Ah. And they ran down the road that leads to the desert, getting away from the city. There was no man left in Ai. The city was left completely unprotected. Then, God told Joshua, Aim at I with the spear in your hand, since I will deliver the city in your hands. At this time, the men who were at the ambush entered the city. They took it and burned it. When I's men looked back, they saw that a cloud of smoke was rising from the city. They realized they could not run in any direction. Oh no! Ah. The Israelites attacked us! Ah. They had a great oh. victory because God was by their side. And in this way, they took over the city of Ai. Yeah. 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 Later, in the Mount Ebal, Joshua created an altar for God with stones that have not been worked by any tool. They used it to offer burnt offerings and sacrifices to God. Then, ahead of the Israelites, Joshua wrote on stones a copy of the Moses Law. Every Israelite, elders, officers, and judges were standing near the Ark of the Covenant carried by the Levites. There, Joshua read every word of God's law, both the blessings and the curses. From this reading Joshua did before all the Israelites, no word that Moses, servant of God, pronounced was omitted. 
the Israelites returned and camped at Gilgal. Some kings who were at the other side of Jordan found out what happened in Israel and allied under one supreme command to confront Joshua and the Israelites. But there was a kingdom called Gibeon that had a different strategy. The Gibeonites were afraid of Israel and realized it would be impossible to fight them and win. Think! If your god can tear down the walls of the cities and fight against its enemies, well, it will be impossible to defeat them. So, they created a plan to avoid being destroyed by them. The Gibeonites went to the Gilgal camp where Joshua was. They went with some donkeys that carried old and broken sacks. They were dressed with old clothes, worn out sandals, and the bread, which was their only food, was hard and damaged. They approached Joshua and said, Sir, we come from a faraway land, uh, right? What? Oh, yes, from very, very far away. Very far away, yes, yes. Yes, well, we are here because we have heard how God has been by your side. Since he took you out from Egypt, the journey through the desert, and every battle that Israel has won. That is why the inhabitants of our country, together with our leaders, have prepared us to come here with the message of letting you know that we want to serve you and we want to make a pact, a, a, a peace treaty. Yes, yes, a treaty, a peace treaty from far away places, but very far away, very far away. Joshua thought it was suspicious and told them, hmm, where are you from? Because if you are from here, from Canaan, we cannot make any treaty with you. Oh, no, 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 we come from very far away, right? Yes, yes, very far, very far, very far. Very far. Very far? Very far, yes, yes, very far. Joshua and the other Israelites were not convinced, and Joshua, suspicious, said, But who are you? Where do you come from? From very far. Look, we will show you. Look at this bread. When we started the journey to come here, our bread was fresh and warm, but now look at it. It is hard and damaged. Have you seen the wineskins where we brought the wine? They were new, but now they are all broken. And our clothing, well, we have nothing to say. The road was so long that everything started to wear out. Oh, yes, 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 from very far, very far away, very. Despite the suspicion they had, Joshua made the mistake of not consulting God about this treaty and accepted the peace treaty. They swore in the name of the Lord and promised to spare their lives. The Israeli leaders ratified the deal. The third day, Joshua and the Israelites found out that they had been deceived. The people were Gibeonites and lived in Canaan. Oh my god! And because of that, the people were angry. Joshua explained to the people, We have made an oath in the name of the Lord, and we cannot cause them any harm. This is what we will do with them. We will spare their lives so that divine punishment does not fall on us for breaking the oath we took. Then he added, mm -hmm. You will be allowed to live, but in exchange, you will be the woodcutters and be in charge of providing water to the community of Israel. Thus, the leaders of the community kept their promise. Joshua demanded the Gibeonite, 
Why have you deceived us by saying that you came from far away when you were actually our neighbors? Uh -huh. Well, we know God is on your side and that he will give you this land, destroying all of its inhabitants, right? Yes, yes, from very far, very far. Okay, that's enough. Well, we feared so much for our lives that we decided to do what you already know. We are at your mercy. Do with us what seems fair and good to you. We are your servants. We will comply with our pact between the Israelites and the Gibeonites, Joshua said. But from now on, you will be faithful to Israel forever. You will be responsible for cutting firewood and bringing water to the community, especially to my God's temple. Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. So, from that very day, they served them, working with the wood and being water carriers for the Israelites, especially of the Lord's altar. And like this, the Gibeonites saved themselves from the Israeli people. The news that the city of Hai had been destroyed and that the Gibeonites had made a peace treaty with the Israelites had come to Adonai Sedek, the king of Jerusalem. When learning about this, Adonai Zedek and his people were greatly alarmed because Gibeon was mightier and greater than the city of Ai. That is why Adonai Zedek sent a message to the following kings. To Hoham, king of Hebron. To Piram, king of Yarmut. To Jephiah, king of Lachish. And to Deber, king of Eglon. And told them, Join me. Let us conquer the city of the traders of Gibeon, because they have made a peace treaty with Joshua and the Israelites. Yes, let's drive those Israelites out of Canaan. Then the five kings of Canaan united and marched with their army to camp opposite Gibeon and attack it. The Gibeonites, for their part, came quickly where Joshua was, who was Gigel, and told them, Joshua, please, please, you, you must help us, but because five kings have allied against us and have declared war on Gibeon. But please, do not abandon these servants of yours. Please come and save us. We need your help. Joshua asked them to calm down and told them he would consult God. With what happened last time, Joshua would never forget to consult God first. And he told Joshua, Yes, go help them. Do not fear them, for I have delivered them in your hands. None of them will be able to resist you. And like that, Joshua prepared his army and they marched all night towards Gibeon. When they finally got there, the Israelites attacked unexpectedly. In turn, God panicked the Canaanites in the presence of the Israeli army. They are more than us, and they are escaping! <laughs> God fights for us. We cannot allow them to escape. We must stop them. What? Look, what is that? As the Canaanites fled from Israel, at heaven, God sent them enormous clouds, and a terrible hailstorm began to fall on the Canaanites. They had killed more enemies than the Israelites had killed with the sword. And they kept fighting. Israel had the advantage against those kings. But it turns out that it was starting to get dark. They are running away, Joshua, they said. 
When the night falls, many of them will escape alive through the dark. Uh, no! Uh, Joshua shouted. This day won't end until we are done with all of them. Uh, so, Joshua, in the presence of the people, bravely said, Sun, stop at Gibeon! Moon, stand on Ayalon! And in effect, the sun was placed in the middle of the sky and did not move for almost an entire day. Ah. There has never been a day like that before. Oh my god! The day in which God obeyed the order of a human being. Without a doubt, the Lord was fighting for Israel! Blah, 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 blah. That feat bought blah, blah, blah. much more time for the Israelites to finish off the army ah. of the Canaanite kings. The five kings, ah. seeing what was happening, said to each other, This cannot be happening. The sun moves forward. It is still. Uh, uh. Stupid Israelites. This is your fault, Adonai Zedek. We should not have formed any alliance. Yes, not just one will fall, but the five Canaan kings. So they escaped blah, 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 to hide blah, 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 in a cave blah, blah, blah. in Makeda. Blah, blah. Yeah. At the end, Joshua and his army returned to the camp of Gigel. Right away, they informed him where the five kings had hidden and gave the order. Reunite several soldiers. I want you to place rocks at the entrance of the cave and place some guards to watch it until I get there. The rest of the soldiers keep going after the missing soldiers. Do not allow them to get to their cities. God is with us! That is what they did. They put the rocks at the entry of the cave. When Joshua arrived at the place, he sent them to take the rocks away and to present the five kings before him. Joshua blah, 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 ordered the blah, blah, blah. commanders to step on the necks of the kings. Then they were executed by being hanged on a tree, and they left them there until evening. Then they took them down and threw them into the same cave where they were hidden. And they covered the cave again with huh? rocks. Huh? Again! Joshua told them. Do not fear or take a step back. On the contrary, be strong and brave. This is what God will do with everyone who you face during battle. That said, the Israelites advanced and conquered with the sword the south of Canaan. They took the land of Makeda, then Libna, Lachish, Eglon, Hebron, and Debir. Each king of these lands was executed in the same way as the Jericho king. Then, the Israelites advanced even more and conquered the south of Canaan, from Kadesh Barnea, from the region of Goshen, to Gibeon. All of those kings and territories were conquered by Joshua in just one expedition, because the Lord, Israel's God, fought for its people. There were other kingdoms in northern Canaan that found out about everything the Israelites had done and joined forces to fight them near the waters of Merom. But since God was on their side, the Israelites defeated their enemies. After their victory, they conquered the land of Hazor. Jabin, the king of Hazor, who had been the leader of uniting all those kingdoms, was executed by the sword of Joshua. Oh, so you were not... Shh, there was no budget. Oh my god. The Israelites ah, conquered all ah, the cities of those kingdoms along with their kings. He killed them by the edge of the sword. Ah, Shimon, 
in Akshap. The mountainous region already belonged to the Israelites. After the conquests, many years have passed. Joshua was already an old man, and God said to him, You are already very old, and there is still a lot of territory to conquer, such as the territory of Philistia, Geshur, and others. It is time to distribute the lands among the tribes. There are only nine remaining, and the other half is part of Manasseh. You, on your part, will distribute and inherit these lands to the Israelites, just as I have commanded you. The tribe of Reuben, Gad, and half of the tribe of Manasseh had already received the inheritance that Moses had assigned them beforehand. The lands were divided when they were on the plains of Moab across the Jordan River. The lands assigned to the tribe of Reuben were located between Aror, which is on the wadi of Arnon stream, to Heshbon. The land of Gad included Shazir and the entire city of Gilead. And the half-tribe of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, inherited from Mahanaim and all the territory of Bashan. However, to the tribe of Levi, Moses did not provide land for inheritance, since his inheritance is the offering that the people gave the Lord, God of Israel. The Israelite assembly was gathered in Shiloh, where the tabernacle was. Eliezer, Joshua, and the chiefs of the tribes were in charge of distributing the land. The inheritances were distributed by lot to the remaining tribes, and according to the number of people they had, just as God had ordered through Moses. Judah's descendants approached Joshua at Gilgal. Caleb, son of Jephana, said to Joshua, Do you remember what the Lord said to Moses concerning you and me at Kadesh Barnea when they sent us as spies to explore these mm -hmm. lands? Nope. Nope. Oh. Instead, my servants Joshua and Caleb, who have shown a different attitude and have been faithful to me, will see the land they explore and their descendants will inherit it. Well, I remained faithful to the Lord my God. That same day, Moses swore to me that the land my feet touch will be my inheritance and that of my descendants, because I was faithful to my God. Forty-five years have passed since the Lord made that promise to me, while Israel wandered in the desert. And here I am. I am already an old man, but the Lord has kept me alive. And I still have the same strength that I had the day Moses sent me. And when it comes to battles, I have the same energy that I had at that time. Then, Joshua blessed Caleb and gave him the territory of Hebron. And from that day, Hebron belonged to Caleb because he was loyal to the Lord, God of Israel. In the territory of Hebron lived Anakim, who are giant men, because with the help of God, Caleb expelled them. From there, he went up to attack the inhabitants of Debir and said, I will give my daughter Aksa as a wife to the man who attacks and conquers the city of Kiryat Sefer. Othniel, a man from the tribe of Judah, conquered the city and married Caleb's daughter. The territory of the tribe of Judah included the entire southern part of Canaan. It was then divided. The territory of Ephraim, son of Joseph tribe, located in the center of Canaan. Also, the other half of the tribe of Manasseh received a huge portion of land since it was a numerous tribe. Then, the tribe of Benjamin was divided, located between Ephraim and Judah. Simeon's tribe was located within the territory of Judah. To the north were located the Zebulon, Issachar, Asher, and Naphtali. 
Lastly, the tribe of Dan. The clans of the Levites were dispersed to live and serve in each tribe. While Joshua received the city of Timnat Serah, which was located in the mountainous region of Ephraim. In some tribes, the Canaanites were not completely expelled from their lands, but rather lived with the Israelites. And thus, the territory of the clans of each tribe was established according to the number of people they had. A long time has passed since the Lord gave peace to Israel regarding their Canaanite enemies. Joshua, old and tired, <gasps> called all the people of Israel, just as Moses had once done. Thus, all the people gathered to listen to their great leader, Joshua, and he said, People of Israel, all of you have witnessed everything that the Lord has done for you. He has fulfilled his promise by giving you the land of Canaan as an inheritance. Therefore, therefore strive to fulfill everything that is written in the book of law of Moses. Do not deviate from that law at all. Do not worship the gods of the nations that remain among you. You know that the Lord your God has been faithful and has fulfilled all his promises. They have all come true. If all of you were faithful and obedient to God, he will continue to bless you. But if you disobey him, follow, worship, or praise other gods, rest assured that the rage of the Lord will be vented on you, and you will be wiped out from the good land the Lord has given you. He then added, Let us remember that a long time ago, God led Abraham to the land of Canaan and promised him a numerous dependency through his son, Isaac. Isaac was given two sons by God, Jacob and Esau. Esau went to live in the land of Edom. Meanwhile, Jacob, whose name God changed to Israel, had 12 sons, and they named each tribe that we know today. Because of the famine in Canaan, Israel and his children went down to Egypt thanks to Joseph. From there, Egypt turned them into slaves. But don't forget that for 400 years, our parents lived as slaves being mistreated. God sent Moses and Aaron, and with the power of God, he struck Egypt with plagues, and the people of Israel came from there. We crossed the dry Red Sea, and we had the support of the Lord with a pillar of cloud. And by night, he kept us warm with a pillar of fire. You must also remember how the Lord fed us in the middle of the desert with manna from heaven. We went through many journeys. We crossed the Jordan River, the march around the walls of Jericho, and all the battles we faced. For this and much more, God has been faithful to us. Surrender yourselves to the Lord, be obedient, and serve Him faithfully, and turn away from the heathen gods. But if it seems wrong to you to serve God, choose for yourselves who you are going to serve. But I, for my part, me and my household, we will serve the Lord. The people, moved by these words, answered, That will never happen. We will not abandon the Lord to serve other gods. He was the one who showed those great signs before us. He protected us in the desert and when we passed through many nations. The Lord drove out all the nations that lived in this country, including the Amorites. For this reason, we too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua said, God will not tolerate your rebellions and sins. If you abandon him and serve other gods, you will have to face the consequences. Only the Lord our God will we serve, and only him will we obey. Mm -hmm. That same day, Joshua blah, blah, renewed blah, blah, the covenant blah, blah, with the people of Israel. Blah, 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 and right there, he told them precepts and rules and recorded them in the book of the law of God. Then he took a huge stone and placed it under a tree that was near the tabernacle of the Lord. And Joshua told the people, This stone will serve as a witness against you. She has heard all the words that the Lord has spoken to us today. 
She will testify against you in case you speak falsehoods against your God. After this, everyone returned home. The remains of Joseph, which the Israelites had brought from Egypt, were buried in Shechem on a piece of land that Jacob had bought for 100 pieces of silver. After a long time, the high priest Eliezer, Aaron's son, died and was buried in the mountainous regions of Ephraim on a property belonging to his son Phineas. And before this, Joshua, son of Nun, servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110 ah. years. And they buried him in his inherited land, which is on Mount Ephraim, north of Mount Gallus. Throughout his life, Joshua proved to be a good disciple and a good leader, hardworking, courageous, hey. and obedient to the voice of God. Thanks to him, the Israelites finally managed to reach the land that was promised to their ancestors. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses. Subscribe, comment, like, and follow us on our social media accounts.